You're doing it all wrong, kids. Let me show you. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. I'm Josh, and we're going to talk about how to make your grass pop, how to make it green, how to make your grass green for 2023 and in subsequent years. We've got some cool stuff we're going to be showing you guys today. This is called Super Soil, and that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about soil, not spray, not chemical soil and a thought process is going to teach you how to keep your grass coming back year after year greener and greener and lush and more beautiful. Stony Bridge. Welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. If this is your first time, your 50th time here, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and watch another video. After this video, check something else out. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on here on the farm. So this is my TYM T574 tractor, and over here is the Honda Pioneer. And this is my luscious green grass. Spring is upon us, guys. I'm gonna have to mow my first time, and as you can see, the grass is looking awesome. You know what? That grass didn't have any fertilizer around it. What happened? How did this happen? How could this be? Because there's a thought process that you guys have to have on your mind when it comes to grass. This is not fertilizer. This is something else. There are a few things I'm going to show you today and a few tips and pointers that I'm going to give you to make your grass pop. You don't see a lot of weeds out here. You don't see much of anything other than beautiful lush green grass. We grow a beautiful garden. We don't use fertilizer. So every year your lawn guy comes out and he sprays your yard or he puts this stuff down. Looks kind of like this right here, but it's not. I guarantee it's not. Your lawn guy, he comes out or maybe you're the lawn guy and you come out and you spread fertilizer all over your grass and all of a sudden, man, that stuff leaps out of the ground and just turns green and awesome and stays green and awesome for at least two weeks. <laughs> right? It doesn't stay green for long. The nitrogen hits and forces that fertilizer into the soil and it makes that grass turn green. However, you're running yourself into a vicious cycle. Now, I want to talk about that vicious cycle. The dependency on your lawn care guy and the dependency on fertilizer for your soil. So, what you really need to know is that soil is a living thing. It's a living thing. There are millions of living creatures in your soil and those living creatures support a network of root systems in your soil, in your lawn. I don't care if it's in the forest, in your lawn, in a cow pasture, in a pond, there are bacteria at work all the time. When you spread chemical fertilizers and that wand that just evergreen keeps your lawn green, you're destroying that microbial environment that lets mother nature pull the nitrogen and the nutrients to your soil through photosynthesis. It pulls carbon to your soil through photosynthesis. It pulls microbes to your soil through photosynthesis. It is an ecosystem and that's what you have to think about when it comes down to it. Now, how do you wrap your head around the ecosystem that is going on in your lawn? Well, first things first, you've got to understand pH. pH is whether your soil is neutral, acidic, or alkaline. Odds are, if you've got a lawn like mine, our soil is inevitably acidic. Our pH of our soil when we first moved to the farm was 4.0. For our tall fescue grass to grow, we need something around the six mark. So what do we do? How do we fix that? We use a product like what we have right here. And this is a granular product. I'll show it to you real quick. It's an all natural product. It is called FastCal. This is from Green Resource. It's called FastCal, otherwise known as SoluCal in some places. It's fast acting enhanced cal acidic lime. It improves fertilizer's effectiveness. You save time and money by lower application rates and it's clean and dust free. It also has all natural bio-enhanced soil additives. It has kelp in it guys. This one bag covers up to 10,000 square feet. This again is called SoluCal. You can use it on lawns, landscapes, golf, turf, sports, gardens, everywhere. Now, let's turn this around. We've got a couple things we want to show you. So whether you know it or not, on the back of a fertilizer bag, a good fertilizer bag, and on the back of the SoluCal, you have a broadcast spreader chart. Scott's Easy Green, Earthway Broadcast Spreader, Lesco, 
prize lawn, all this stuff is right back here. So we have an Earthway EV even spread. <laughs> and it says to set it at 18 to maintain our soil pH, which is six pounds per 1,000 square feet, or we want to raise our pH, which is 12 and a half pounds per 1,000 square feet. And one bag covers 4,000 square feet. That's what we're using right here. So we'll set this to 25 on the Earthway broadcast cedar. Okay. Now, as we look right in here, we get all the information and you don't find this on many things that you're going to put on your lawn. You don't find all the ingredients right here for you. So let's look at the ingredients here. Guaranteed analysis, calcium, that's what's helping to bring that pH, magnesium, calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, calcium carbonate equivalent, effective neutralizing value derived from calcitic limestone, 1% sea kelp, humic acid, lignin sulfonate, total other ingredients, 89%. So <laughs> I don't know what the other ingredients are, but I do know that this stuff helps to bring the pH of my soil down to a more neutral level. So the pH was four, now we're working towards six. What I do is I go by the acre here on the farm, but you can go right off that bag right there. And what you need to know is sweeten your soil. Now, there's a resource out there for all you guys that want to do this on your own. If your lawn guy is coming every year and he's spraying or he's putting down fertilizer and he's not sending off a soil test or he's not doing a soil test, he's just throwing money on the ground and hoping that it works. Okay, that's not what we need to do. That's not how we waste our money. We waste our money on toys like jet skis and stuff like that, right? <laughs> so this is what that product looks like and that helps to enhance the value of our soil and does not destroy the microbial life in our soil. On the back of the machine right here, I have some turf fertilizer. If you decide to fertilize your lawn, what you need to know is that you are damaging that ecosystem in your lawn and you've got to think about that. There are microbes in the soil. So every year, your lawn guy comes and he plugs, he aerates, he dethatches, he destroys the microbial life in your soil. He or she destroys the microbial life in your soil by pouring acidic and poisonous chemical-based, petroleum-based fertilizer onto your soil. Thus, running off all the earthworms, which would naturally aerate your soil, right? Running off all of the microbes, which would naturally feed your soil, and virtually sterilizing or desertifying your soil. It takes years for this to recover, guys. So the thought process here is for a greener lawn, the first thing you need to consider is that soil is a living thing. The next thing you need to consider is how can you preserve the life of that living thing? And if throwing a petroleum-based product on that soil seems to be the right thing, I think you're dead wrong. I think that's what uh, asphalt is made out of, isn't it? Petroleum-based products, right? So here's one more thing I want to show you, and this is something we are getting ready to test here on the farm. It's 100% natural, no chemical ever, pure natural organic super soil, the world's best fertilizer. So super soil claims and you guys can test this out for yourself there'll be a link down in the video description for you guys this is not a sponsored video but one kilogram contains is that one billion gazillion zillion <laughs> super soil microbes that work like magic so what this stuff does is restores the microbes back to your soil so if year after year after year you have been paying the lawn care guy or you've been doing this yourself and you've been spreading fertilizer only to watch your lawn get really green for a little while and then fall back down what you're doing is counterintuitive to a healthy ecosystem in your lawn. The healthy ecosystem contains the nematodes. The healthy ecosystem contains the microbes and the earthworms and the grubs. It contains all of that. And if you do that, you will save fuel, you will save time, and you will save money. If you just rely on the guy that comes and sprays your yard or puts down all the fertilizer every year, that's just fine. That's not for me. It's not for everybody. There's science at work here, guys, and you really need to think about it. So what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna take this tractor and we're gonna head out here in this pasture in front of the house and the cows will be out here in just a couple days. This is livestock safe. Livestock will not be harmed by this. They won't eat it, okay? It's not like food. It doesn't taste like food, doesn't smell like food. It almost, 
it just has kind of a seaweed smell to it. So we're gonna put this out on the land, spread it out over here, and we're actually gonna go in and we're gonna put grass seed out. And we're gonna let the cows trample the grass seed into the pasture out here. And for the lawn right here, we have thick and luscious enough grass that we're gonna just spread, broadcast spread grass seed. And once it rains, it'll fall down to the soil and where the worms have been working, where the microbes have been working, that grass seed will sprout. And it will eventually, when you have the right ecosystem and the right pH for your grass, that grass seed will eventually push out any weeds. My neighbor, his name is Tony, he asked me, man, I see your lawn and I don't understand why you don't have so, as many weeds as I do. And I say, well, Tony, I don't put fertilizer on my lawn. I let the chickens out there. I put a little chicken manure on there sometimes, but I don't put fertilizer. I sweeten up the land and I let mother nature do the work. I just mow it. I don't bag my grass clippings. You're feeding your grass with carbon. When you bag your grass clippings, you're taking the carbon away. So you're desertifying your lawn. Don't bag your grass clippings if you have to clip twice as many times per year do it just cut the grass and mow that broadcast it right out into the soil because again the rotting and the decaying of that matter and the actual clipping of the grass stimulates root structure and stimulates the grass to grow so the more you cut it the better it grows a good indication of soil health is what's going on outside of the ground. A good indication of root health. If the plant that's sticking out of the ground looks good and healthy, then the root system is good and healthy. If the plant that's sticking out of the ground looks drab and dry and doesn't look very healthy, then that plant is not healthy above ground or below ground, and it's probably a pH issue. No matter where you live, no matter what you do, you can get on your little Google machine right now and find the kind of grass that you have in your lawn and you can research it, you can find out what pH it likes, you can take a scoop of soil, send off a soil sample, you can contact your local USDA Farm Service office, or you can just Google search how to send a soil sample off, send it off, and it's gonna tell you the pH of your soil. It's also gonna tell you what nutrients that you are lacking. You can choose from several different organic options to fix that nutrient that's lacking in your soil. If you fix the soil, you fix the grass. If you spread the chemical, you make the grass green, but you don't fix anything. Guys, I got a lot of work to do. Thank you all so much. You'll see from some of the drone footage right now, we're just spreading out. You'll see some spots that look like the grass is a little bit sparse. That's because the cows have been out here grazing. They've been grazing all winter long. It's springtime and everything's starting to green up. We're at the spring flush and we've got to get out and we've got to take care of our turf. And that's what we're doing, turf and pasture today. Turf and pasture, thinking soil, thinking microbes, thinking ecosystem, and thinking pH. pH is super, super important, guys. I don't know if any of you have ever managed a swimming pool, but pH, if you keep your pH right, you won't get green slime in it. If you let your pH get off, the green slime will grow. So your pH is what determines what will grow in the soil that you have. So be sure you pay attention to that. Be sure you understand that soil is an ecosystem and you don't have to spread garbage, petroleum-based chemical fertilizers in order to have a green lawn. No fertilizer on this lawn. None, zero, no chicken manure in two years. No fertilizer in four years, guys, four years. Remember, Grass needs biomass to hold moisture, make it drought tolerant and grow. It's an ecosystem, not nitrogen, P and K, not NPK, okay? See you guys next time on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. Thank you so much for paying attention to what I've got for you. I hope this changes the way that you think about your lawn or your pasture or your grass. Right on. <laughs> See you guys next time on the Stony Ridge. Woo! We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids We're living life pure and sweet That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge Woo! We're going to be talking about We're going to be talking about grass yeah. Something on my lens I don't know man, my grass won't grow Well, you're thinking about it all wrong You need to think about it differently
My uh, put them down on fertilizer, boy. That grass is gonna go green, 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 and gonna dry it out. Woo! All right, I can't have fun. <laughs>